Welcome back fellow mobile gamers of YouTube, it's NimbleThaw here and I figured I'd do a quick video about this game, the open world free to play MMORPG Albion Online that is now finally out on mobile. So here's what we're gonna do, I'll be playing the game for a bit and give you my first impressions while talking about the game's main gameplay features and maybe most importantly of all, how well executed or not well executed this mobile version of the game is. Now as a quick intro for those who don't know the game already, Albion Online is a sandbox MMORPG originally released for PC in 2017, but of course it is now finally out on Android and iOS, and by the way, you can find the download links in the description box down below this video, and look at this, there are so, so many new players here running around in this main beginner city of the game. My phone here is even having a hard time just loading all of these players, just look at this. And yes, this is the exact same game from PC, and you're playing with the same people who play on PC, it's just basically a mobile client, essentially, a bit like we saw it with old school RuneScape. It's also already a very popular game, by the way. It has about 150, 160,000 daily active players, and that was when it was only out on PC. So now that it's out on mobile as well, I am sure that we're gonna see those numbers increase to maybe 200,000, maybe even 250,000. Now that's of course nothing in comparison to a game like old school RuneScape, which I think has about 1.7 million daily active players, but it is still a lot and it still does make this is one of the biggest mobile MMORPGs out there. Now, in terms of this game's most notable features, it is one of those sandbox-like experiences where everything can be crafted and traded and sold between players in the game, which creates a really nice player-driven economy, a lot like, once again, in RuneScape. There are also no classes, so you basically just are whatever you wear. I think that's how they phrase it in this game. Whatever you wear is what you become, which is really neat as it means we can stick with just a single character and then just evolve that character over time in the game. For example, let me show you guys. If we, we have to kill the last part of this rat here, if I can target it, there we go. And then I wanna show you guys here the inventory where we have, for example, this weapon, which is a novice's broadsword. And we can pick between two different skills that this weapon unlocks, which is a really cool feature that RuneScape doesn't have, by the way, now that I keep making comparisons to RuneScape. And the same goes for most of our other equipment, like, for example, this soldier's armor here. Once again, two different skills. So I think that's a pretty interesting system that I haven't seen in that many other games. Typically, you just have a skill tree and you level up skills and that's how you unlock them. But in this game, it's through equipment. So it really does matter what you equip. And if I paid a bit more attention to the game here, I would actually be able to dodge those attacks that are coming in and, and push me back. We can do that with this skill here. Let's see if we can do it in time. Yes, there we go. Very, very nice. The game also has a very big emphasis on both PvP and PvE content at both small and large scale, where we lose all our gear if we die. So that might sound very hardcore, but it's something that I know RuneScape players are used to, and it creates a really nice high-risk combat experience, which is something I think most other, especially mobile MMORPGs, are lacking. So I think the developers of Albion wanted to do something about that, and they certainly did succeed at creating an experience where if we die, which we're very close to now, by the way, so let's use this healing skill here. But if we die, we uh, we will be very, very, very sad, especially if we had some really good equipment on us. Now, before we go on, let's just have a quick look here at what we got from this enemy here. We got some novices mercenary shoes, it seems. So let's just drag those into our inventory here. And what was this other drop? That seemed to just be some silver, but that's also okay. We can use that in town, as I said, to buy other items from other players. So it doesn't matter if, if we don't find loot from every enemy that we kill. Now, in terms of other notable features, we can also fight over control of land in this game. That is something that, of course, I can't do right now, but it unlocks towards the end game of the game. We can also grow our own crops. We can participate in group dungeons and much more like that. I mean, it basically has all the stuff you'd expect from a large-scale MMORPG that has been in development for a very long time at this point. Now, whenever we kill monsters in this game or we collect resources or pretty much do anything, really, we can progress in this destiny board here, and it is absolutely humongous. Just, <laughs> just look at this. I mean, there's so many things to unlock, and for example, right now, now, we just unlocked this one here. We got that by killing enough creatures, it seems, and it gave us a passive bonus. That means that damage versus creatures of tier 3 or higher is increased by 15%, so that is not insignificant, and defense versus creatures of tier 3 or higher is increased by 13% as well. Something I really enjoy about this combat system, by the way, is that it feels like something in between the very slow-paced combat that we saw in a game like Warhammer Odyssey, and then the super fast-paced and over-the-top combat found in a modern MMORPG. RPG, like, for example, Black Desert Mobile. I think the developers of Albion actually found a pretty nice middle ground here, where the combat certainly feels engaging, and, and you do have to be careful with what you do, but it's not completely over the top.
up, and I think that works very well, especially for, for mobile devices. Now, Albion is one of those types of games, by the way, where you really need to spend a lot of time to get to the end game, by the way, so just be prepared for that. There's lots of grinding, lots of resource collection ahead of you if you're just getting started with this game, and there's also a big focus on group-based large-scale combat, so finding a guild, finding a group of people to play with is very important if you want to dive deep into the game. But that's also what makes it a really great game for those who enjoy those elements. Now, when it comes to the performance and the graphics of the game on mobile, the UI is way too small, which is something they will have to fix. And I also feel pretty confident that they will eventually fix it. I mean, just look at the inventory here, for example. Things are pretty small. And during character creation, it got even worse. There were so many tiny, tiny elements. And, you know, trying to customize your character became almost impossible, frankly, at least on my phone. Now, as for the art style and the graphics, graphics of the game, you can see here, hopefully, if we zoom in a little bit, that it's a very low-poly art style, but the animations and the models themselves actually look nice for a game of this age, and it also means that the game can run on even slightly older devices than if it had high-poly realistic graphics, for example. But what the game lacks in UI, though, it definitely makes up for in terms of the controls, which I'm very glad to see. I mean, it's a great experience. We have a joystick over here on the left side, of course, and then we have the buttons to attack and use skills over on the right side, but we can also enable, which I've already done, tap to move, as you can see right here, and we can do that through the game's settings, where we also have lots of other settings for, well, not only the controls, actually, but as you can see here, we have many different types of settings, double press to attack, for example, exclude low tier resources, which is nice when you get to the higher levels. And then we also have lots of settings for the video and the graphics. So if the game is lagging on your device, this is where you should head into. And we also have a bit of interface settings to be fair to this game, but I would just like to be able to increase the hot size even more. It was at 80%, which is what you see right now when I started the game, I changed it to 100%, but I'd love to be able to have it at maybe 120 or maybe even 150%. Now, the developers definitely also made it easier for themselves to create a good experience in terms of the controls by making sure that we have this isometric perspective instead of allowing us to move around the camera, which, as you can see, we cannot do. I can only run around in the world itself. Now, let's see if we can actually succeed at defeating this boss here. I feel like he's dealing quite a lot of damage, and we should get out of range here, and I just remembered that we should have used this iron skin or stone skin ability a bit earlier, but I think it's gonna be okay, though. It looks like he is taking a lot of damage right now. Now, of course, I'm playing with melee here, but you can also equip a bow or even a mate staff if you want to have a different type of combat experience. I just figured I'd go for the warrior type of character here, because I typically go with an archer and sometimes that just gets a bit too boring but we did defeat the boss that is very nice and now i think we can teleport out of here again by talking to this guy and we'll get back to the main town so that's all pretty great right but what about the monetization of this game that is the one thing that ruins almost every single mmorpg on mobile after all so when it comes to the monetization there are two things that you can buy one is gold which is a premium currency used to buy vanity cosmetic items or premium and we can buy gold through in-app purchases or buy it from other players for silver which is this game's in-game currency now premium is very relevant if you really get into the game it's an 11 dollars per month subscription a bit like we see it in runescape or what Warcraft, and it unlocks the full gameplay experience and lots of additional features. So to experience the full game, this is what you want to go for, but remember, you can buy it either through in-app purchases or through silver, which you earn through gameplay. So you can basically just play the game and you will be able to earn enough to buy this premium subscription every month. And this setup where gold or premium can be bought with silver is once again, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself a bit here, very much like in World of Warcraft or RuneScape, where we can also spend in-game currency on buying the game's subscription. I know some argue that this allows paying players to acquire almost everything in the game very easily because they just buy the premium currency or the gold and then they sell that for in-game currency, which they can then use to buy the best items in the game from other players instantly. But the other side of that argument is that a free player can then also get the premium features for free. So I definitely see both sides of that argument. And I think personally, I prefer the one where as a free player, you can actually acquire everything in game. But let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or disagree with that. Overall, I think that Albion Online is exactly the type of game that many old school MMORPG players that now only play mobile games have been looking for. It definitely does have its flaws, but it also has lots of good stuff and a ton of content that has been developed 
over the past many, many years of development. So if you're interested in checking out the game on your smartphones, the download links are in the description box down below. And be sure to also let me know what you think about the game in the comments. I will be down there engaging with you guys. And I look forward to having that discussion with you. So I hope you enjoyed the video and that you'll leave a like and subscribe on your way out. If you haven't already, now would be a great time to do that. Because then, until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around. Oh, 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 oh,